Hello, this is Blender 2.8 alpha version. It's currently in development. It's unstable, so don't use it for any serious work. And this right now is a scene that I made uh, to show the new uh, rendering engine called EV. And yeah, it's, an, it's a small flat interior. And you can see, yeah, what's quite amazing is that there's an indirect illumination that's completely real time. It's, it's pre baked, but the baking took about 20 seconds on my mm, i7-5820K CPU. So, fairly powerful CPU, but not the best currently and the baking also uses only one core I think so it really doesn't help if you have m m more cores than, than than my six core CPU and uh, here you can see what's already in the new thing is the ambient occlusion which looks really good, even though it's a little bit noisy. And another very cool feature is uh, planar reflections. So you can have mirrors that are reflecting exactly what they should. It looks really well. And the difference with difference with the, the ambient occlusion is really, really cool. It's really big. I will show you in a moment. So for now, this, this is how it looks. Yeah, I think it looks really awesome. I'm really looking forward to, to use it in, in production. And yeah, this is, this is it. I can, I can show you now something more about the scene. I can show you the settings for the ambient occlusion. I can show you also the difference, what it makes if you switch it off. So here is the ambient occlusion. So if I switch it off, it takes a while. Mm, currently, I uh, hope it doesn't crash. It's still in alpha, so this will probably change in the future. But now it should work uh, like this. So you can see the difference is absolutely huge. And the new ambient occlusion that's in Blender is really cool because it works much better than the old ambient occlusion that was that's in the current 2.79 and the main difference you can see is that this ambient occlusion doesn't only darken the scene, but it can also brighten it in certain spaces. For example, like this. This is the ambient occlusion off. You, you can see that this is middle gray. And if you turn it on, it gets much brighter in those corners. So it's, re it's, really, it's really amazing. I think it adds so much realism to the scene. The edges, the corners of the white walls looks, look really, really nice. There are currently some problems in the scene with reflections. So if you look from this, this, this angle, those reflections on the floor don't look very good, but it could be fixed if I add planar reflection surface which I can show you how to do. It's sim as simple as adding to Pro, but for me it didn't work at the moment because, yeah, as you can see, it doesn't respect the the roughness of the surface. I, I guess it's it's still. In development, so in the future, I could add 
planar reflections to to make my floor appear better than now to have better reflections right now it looks totally unrealistic it's too shiny but yeah so for now I try to switch it off which I don't know how to do because I accidentally and now now I can delete it so it's fine yeah and now you can see uh, that the blender started recalculating the indirect illumination it happens all in real time so you can still work with your scene and yeah uh, for this scene I don't have too much too, too big resolution of the of the indirect grid but for me it's important that it goes it's it's fast Yeah, I can show you the. Yeah, this is the light light probe. I will check it in the in the new layer editor. So those are the lights, and those are the grids. So I can show you the data, which which is yeah. So, so you can see how many how many points are ca calculated. In this room, it's fairly dense, but in those in in the other rooms, they are more simple. They are just. Mm, I think there are six balls in the, or nine in the in the bathroom. Uh, it works quite quite good, quite well. It has some small minor problems like this darkening, which is caused by overlapping of, of the of the fields so th this is something I could work on probably but yeah, it's, it's, it's quite difficult to um, position the, the probes exactly where you want it currently because there is no wireframe mode so it's really hard to guess where, where to where to place it Never mind. It still looks really well. So I will hide data and switch back to only the render. And now I also wanted to show you how the new layer system works. It's a little bit confusing because it's called. Yeah, I don't know how it's called. Yeah, co collections. It's it's it doesn't it's not called layers, but it's called collections, and uh, the table is placed in the outliner, and there are two important things. There is a master collection tree that I think it's th this this is the master tree that's unique for your scene I guess and then you have a active render layer which is this one and you can here you can set the visibility and selectability which you can't do in the master collection tree there, there are no no buttons for this so in the master collection tree, you basically um, organize your models. So here I have garbage collection where I put all the stuff that I don't want to delete from the scene, but I want to. I don't want to show it. Then I have my scene divided to different sub collections the collections can be nested which is absolutely great so i have lighting walls doors windows then i have the 
rooms, separate rooms, so I can switch to furniture and floors in different rooms to better optimize the scene or to, to see what, what, what's there. Yeah. Then I have a separate layer with people, which I don't always want to see. Don't know why there are those shiny reflections still. But it's probably because uh, the scene didn't recalculate. So I can I will I will revert the scene because I don't want to go back and you, you see that all the lighting must recalculate again. So I will use this to show you how to switch certain elements. I will switch to active render layer and uh, it, it takes some time. I don't know exactly why. Or No, no, I, I'm already there. I can find the people and I can simply switch them off. The tricky thing is that they still appear in my reflection. Reflections, you can see that the, the girl and the man are still there. And for that you need to recalculate everything, which is again, again, currently not so easy. There is no button, I, I couldn't find it. So the easiest way is to revert the scene. It will, it will automatically recalculate eventually, but it can take some time and I don't want to wait till the algorithm finds what should be switched off. So this, this is basically it. You can see the, the huge difference with the, with the baked lighting. In my opinion, this is absolutely the best feature that ever came to Blender. It's maybe even better than Cycles. And I'm, uh, I, I think I won't use Cycles so much from now on or from the date when the 2.8 is official, officially released. So that's it. Yeah, and I can also show you mm, the settings for ambient occlusion because someone asked for that on the forum. So there are only three mm, settings here. You can increase the samples, which are currently uh, on the level seven. But in my opinion, it takes quite a lot of samples to, 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 to have absolutely, uh, to, to, to have less noise, but even with 32 samples, which is currently probably the maximum, yeah, you can even put a higher number there, even then you can see some noise in the shadows. It's not very visible, it's, it's, it's almost clear, but yeah, under the chair you can see the, you can still see, see the noise. The other thing is that I have GTX 970, which is quite powerful card. And you can see that with 32 samples, the ambient occlusion uh, goes a bit, uh, it, it's starting to be a bit slow. And you can even see those artifacts. Don't know what causes them, but I think that it will crash Blender soon. If I continue, oh, it doesn't. Cool. So, this is basically it.